What's the worst smell you've ever experienced? Ever tried to lime dip a gut? The first time it happened near me I was told it'll smell like a wet fart trapped in a blanket for a while. I was also told to go directly home and spray my clothes down and hang them outside. I screamed something about why does it smell like sulfur in here, is this a gas leak? Common nope. They're dipping cats in sulfur to kill ringworms. I guess I'd rather smell like old farts than catch ringworms. So, a necessary evil. I used to work in a mini mart and on one of my first days this guy comes in who's homeless and obviously mentally ill, covered in shit and who knows what else. My manager seen him outside the door and immediately said get him out of here as fast as possible and I had no idea why and was kind of offended she would say that about a homeless man, until he got closer and I could see, smell him and almost vomited. It's so sad that somebody could get to that point in life. Reminds me of helping my bill move out of his college apartment late one summer, his lease was up, he got a new place. His then roommate, a total piece of S dollar and at, was supposed to be watching things because my bill had moved back home over the summer to work. Long story short, power had been shut off most of the summer and the fridge dot was quite a piece of work. By the time we had gotten there, the inside was almost completely black dot covered in what we later realized were dead dried out maggots. Honestly, as bad as the aroma was it probably was so far gone that it was likely past its worst. The roommate wanted to give up his security deposit and abandon ship, but my bill needed the cash so him and I cleaned that thing top to bottom. As we were leaving, the complex manager came in to do the inspection. We were honest with him about the state of the fridge and how we didn't envy the next tenants. And surprisingly he said we had done a good job and wasn't worried about it. I wouldn't have wanted to use that fridge. Yep, we had my grandmother's old fridge in our, non-climate controlled garage. In the wake of dealing with all her stuff after her passing, this fridge was left to sit for a while. It didn't work all that well. So we decided to dispose of it. To do so, you have to remove the doors before you bring it to the dump. Though the fridge was empty, the smell nearly brought us to our knees. I almost passed out. My steel stomach husband actually loaded it into the truck and the two of us got it out as fast as we could when we got to the dump and literally peeled out of there. Such an incredibly awful smell. I cannot begin to imagine what a fridge like that with food left in it smells like. My husband is a funeral driver. We live in BC, and we recently had this record-breaking heat wave, upwards of 40 degrees when we're used to under 30 during the height of summer. Lots of people died. They didn't have enough drivers to keep up with the calls so some deceased clients had to wait to be picked up for like one two days, essentially being microwaved in their rooms with no air conditioning. You can probably figure out the rest. This is already marked as an SFW, but I'll give an extra little warning for this one. Got called out for a wellness check after a neighbor smelled something awful coming from the patient's house. The guy shot himself in the head while in the bathtub, and no one knew for weeks. The entire bathroom was coated in blood and brain matter that was now rotting. But the soup he's now made with some ragged croutons was the real kicker. I've had patients who were too overweight to get up and use the restroom, so they instead shit in a bucket next to them. When it got too full, they just tipped it over onto their floor. The entire house was coated with a nice thick layer of fecal matter and dead animals between the hoarder house mess. That one smelled pretty awful, too, but not as bad as suicide soup. We have a few feral cats that come by and we leave a plate of food out for. What I'm assuming is a fox. I saw one run through the backyard one morning, will come by and drag the plate of food away and piss on it or around it. The piss is fucking pungent. I put my hand down under a bush to grab the plate and my got a handful of wet rotting leaves and fox piss. Had to wash my hands like 10 times to get the stench off. My mother had fallen and landed on with her butt, hip area on the corner of a nightstand. The result was a hematoma that was the size of a basketball, 
She's a large person. This hematoma was so large that she became anemic from it and had to be hospitalized. The swelling hardly subsided for weeks and weeks. She contacted her doctor and they advised her that she had to manually relve some pressure. She had it all set up with the blood bag and everything being a former RN and needed somebody to flip the switch if you will. I was that unlucky soul. I haven't the words to describe that smell. Just absolutely putrid. A month or two's worth of stagnant blood. I can only say that I left the room teary-eyed and gagging. For weeks after I would randomly get flashbacks of the smell and it would be like I was there again. Luckily that stopped. She's okay now too. I hate to tell you bud. Those weren't flashbacks, that was particulate matter in your mucous membranes. Editing to add, because I'm getting a lot of questions. Yes, all lingering smells are due to particulate matter, which comes in various sizes. Particulate matter is microscopic, so you can't see it, but it still interacts with your body. Think of particulate matter like smog, secondhand smoke or someone else's fart. Some household gases have chemicals added to them specifically so your nose can pick it up and be alerted to danger. Edit 2. Commenter below is correct that some similar smells can revive negative olfactory experiences. Olfaction is a strong memory retrieval device. Some smells do linger, especially those involving fecal or putrid matter. So a good rule of thumb is be mindful of washing up if you're around such. Example. If you're still smelling dog shit, check your shoes. And yes, if you smell someone else's putrescence, while living or dead, it has made a home in your nostrils but your body will flush it eventually. <coughs> Volunteering for a local EMS 911 service during the peak of a particularly hot July. Hearing some talk on the radio of a wellness check, multiple mentions of overwhelming smell, but the police are suspecting no human could be living in the conditions they see through the window tilde few. Not my problem then tilde. EMS tones drop, PD reporting audible yelling from the home. Right, no longer not my problem. On arrival we find PD no work close to the home in question. Visibly distressed officer explains they gain access into the home and found the entire house packed to a hoarder style. Police officer absconded due to the overwhelming smell and lack of air conditioner on a beautiful 100 degree plus afternoon. As I approach the house I immediately recognize the smell is decomposing human remains. Confirm contact with an alive person in the home. Time to haul resuscitation equipment over the mountain of garbage like the good little yak that I am. Climbed around the entrance and noted the deceased in the front bathroom. Appears that they died many days prior after defecating on the floor. <coughs> Maneuver our way into the back room to find a bed bound 700 pounds plus person surrounded by Diet Coke bottles. Story was that the live-in uncle, caretaker had gone missing three days prior and the 700 pound person was unable to call for help. They had survived off a stockpile of Diet Coke at bedside and was in surprisingly okay shape vitals wise. Only concern was asking for snacks, called, well begged, the fire department to help extricate us, since now I'm trapped in the room with the patient as leaving would be considered abandonment. Turned into a 6-7 hour operation of tearing off the side of the house to gain access. The relief I experienced crawling out of the demolition was akin to being birthed cesarean except I was welcoming into a world surrounded by vimitis from the firefighters disturbed by the situation. Moral of the story, don't poop on the ground. Use the toilet like everyone else, please. I used to work at Target. I got hurt and I became the store operator and worked at the fitting room. One day my boss calls me on the phone and says there is a lady coming toward you right now. Do not let her take anything besides clothes into the fitting room. He was the head of asset protection. Anyways a few seconds pass and this huge lady comes towards me. She has a shirt and some napkin in her hand in which I could see a little tube of lip gloss through. I told her I would take the napkin and she says it's okay I got it. It's just trash I tell her we don't allow anything but clothes in the fitting room and she proceeded to put it in her pants. As she walks by I catch a whiff of the worst stench ever so back off and wait for her to finish.
She comes out a couple minutes later and hands me the shirt. It smelled like sour ass juice and B.O. it literally made my eyes water and put a knot in my throat. As usual I had to go check the fitting room after she left to make sure it was clean and see if she left a wrapper to the lip gloss. When I walked in there it was one of the worst experiences of my life that haunts me to this day. I guess the lady knew we were watching her so to get back at us she peed in the fitting room. But it wasn't just the smell of pee, it was her body odor, her sour pungent putrid smell. It was like athlete's feet and bad meat and piss and something else. She was really fat and I know that one of the smells were from her not cleaning in her rolls. I had to leave early that day from literally getting sick. Even now it's making me sick. But we had to get a specialist to come and clean the fitting room and we closed the fitting room for the next couple days. I don't even want to know where she put that lip gloss. I was at a track meet in high school and had to take a piss but the common bathrooms were too far away, so I opted to use the only porta potty that was closest to the track. It was a tri meet, so three schools were there. Dot. As I swung open the door, a waft of pure sourness just hit me in the face. There were no words that could describe the horrendous smell. My mouth gagged and my nostrils stung. I had the audacity to look down the toilet because I couldn't even comprehend how it was even possible to achieve this level of horridness. There literally was just a mound of brown and yellow shit. Diarrhea piled so high in there that I could imagine. An unsuspecting person who sat down could have possibly scrapped the top with their dong if it was long enough. Your butthole could have been scorched from the stench itself. Welp, I promptly closed it, went for a walk, and vowed never to use another porta potty again for as long as I live. I remember being on a placement in my first year of pharmacy school. The door opened and a few seconds later. I could smell something very dot 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 sharp and unpleasant, not like body odor, or shit, etc. Poor guy that came in had a tumor or something involving his jaw slash mouth slash one side of his face. I assume it was inoperable. I have never had to try so hard in my life to act pleasant and pretend nothing was wrong. I actually gagged after he left. I thought I was going to vomit, and he must have been able to smell it and had to live with it on top of being in pain dot 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 just brutal. Once I was camping in a tent with my cousin, when a girlfriend called me, it was supposed to be a guy's night out, we were 17, I told him I'd only talk to her for a few minutes, we were both still laying on the air mattress, and what should have been 10 minutes became 40, my cousin grew impatient. And I don't blame him at all, so he decided to pull a prank on me. He set up his ass at my head, behind my head, behind my back. Remember we are both laying on the mattress. Then he proceeds to tap me on the back, so I roll over to him, and here I see his bare asshole. Cheeks spread right at my nose. Surprised I gasp and inhale right as he rips a huge fart. And I swear to God there was no air in that inhalation. It was pure fart. 100% fart from ass to nose. I felt poisoned, intoxicated. I ran out to breath fresh air. Then we laughed our ass off. That was the worst smell I've ever smelled. The rotting meat we had to put in the bin outside that was in our freezer when Katrina knocked out our power for days. No, wait, after having read someone else's post. It was the ungodly stench inside the back of a van that held the furniture and belongings of a man who died alone at home, and eventually liquefied. I was on a crew that was told to empty it out. We couldn't go more than halfway into the van. It was that repulsive. We walked out on the job. You want that shit out of there? Get it yourself. That was a job for a hazmat team, not day laborers. Depends on what you mean by worst. I used to work in a hospital and you deal with a lot of necrotic tissue, abscesses, poop, pee, blood, every fluid imaginable. You kinda go numb to the smells of bodies, alive or dead, after a while. The one I'll never forget until my dying breath and makes me nauseous to this day is aspartame, sucralose, you know the fake sugars aka spinda and sweet and low? You may be asking, why are those the worst smell? Well, buckle up, buttercup. It's story time. So, 
I was working in a NER and a patient came in by ambulance. Several bullet wounds and the patient is knocking on death's door. I'm shadowing a NER doc and we go assess the patient. I walk into the patient's room and there is a very faint weird chemical sweet smell in the room, like someone made the grossest tea ever. Never really smelled a room of sweet and glow before but oh well. NBD, right? The doctor assesses the patient, does CPR, pushes a bunch of meds, Pretty standard routine, he gets done, comes over to me and says unfortunate, he's so young. My dumb naive self responds what do you mean the doctor says the patient is basically dead. I look at his vitals and everything and I respond his blood pressure is good, his SPO2 is holding at 95% and he's responsive to pain, what makes you so certain he's going to die? This grizzled dirt doctor looks at me and says you smell that, that sort of sickly sweet smell in the air? Me, I mean, yeah, I noticed it but I figured it was some cleaner or a solvent or something. Doc, come over here. So I go to the head of the patient's bed and the patient has a two hole in the top of his head. That fake sugar smell was his brain matter. The bullet managed to miss his cerebellum brain stem so his heart was still pumping away fine and dandy but the dude was a vegetable waiting to bleed out from the massive chunk of brain missing. I had been told that brains don't really smell since they're mostly fat but when they've been vaporized by a bullet, the high concentration of glucose in the brain makes the fat, protein, and CSF make a vague chemically sweetness. To this day, I get all when I taste fake sugar and have to check the ingredients label for any aspartame or sucralose. Came to say this GI bleed. I worked in a digestive disease center and we just did regular scopes, upper and lower, but occasionally did more invasive GI surgery. One guy came in, went through the nurse's admit protocol, decided he had to shit. Then used the bathroom right next to my desk. Blue spray could never, would never dissolve that smell. We had to lock down the area, get the special biohazard cleaning unit, and even then had to give it a good 24 hours before there was no smell. Earlier this year my brother died from COVID-19. He'd been dead for a month before his body was discovered. He lived in a rooming house and the other tenant thought it was garbage. I know. There's a lot to unpack in that story. Because of the pandemic, getting access to his room took over a month. The room had been sealed the whole time with the windows closed. I had to go in there to look for paperwork and other stuff. Turns out he was also a hoarder. There was rotted food in there as well. I can't describe what that smelled like. I used Vicks to mask the smell, a tip given to me by an ex-cop I met in Lowe's while looking for masks but that wasn't enough. In the interest of brevity and trying to retain whatever is left of my sanity I won't go into too many details. This was fairly recent and I'm still dealing with it. I was doing my clinical rotations at a hospital. Right before lunchtime, we had an old lady, maybe 80-90, come in the ear with necrotizing fasciitis, flesh-eating bacteria, all over her legs. We had to lift her to place new sheets under her and the smell that hit my nose, I don't even remember because I had to block it from my memory, it was that bad, no lunch that day. Another one that comes second is when I assisted in a surgery where we had to drain a guy's maxillary sinus, because he would have recurrent sinusitis. When the ENT surgeon hit that pocket filled with pus and mucus, that smell was just rank. I can't describe it. But it's what you'd think old pus and festering bacteria would smell like. It was like greenish, yellow too. Edit, I hope I didn't come off offensive all. I don't think medical stuff is gross. I'm realizing that these conditions are more common than we believe. I just wanted to relate those experiences because as a student at the time that's how I felt. But I hope if anyone is actually experiencing chronic sinusitis that you get it checked out by your doctor because it could definitely turn into an abscess if left too long and not treated with the right antibiotic course. In the summer of 2008, late at night one time I had to let one rip and thought it would be funny to do it in my brother's room then close the door. Big mistake. Whatever came out of my body that night was a concentrated gas of death. My brother woke up almost immediately and began violently throwing up once I told him I farted. 
My other brother's room was right across the hall and when I opened the door it was enough to make him start gagging in his sleep. One fart woke up three people and caused two of them to throw up. It lingered for well over an hour as well. The smell was beyond anything I had ever smelled at that point in my life and to this day I've never been able to replicate it. Edit. For those interested I've never been able to pin down what it was that I ate that day. I've tried recreating it but even when it happened it only happened once like that. The aftershocks were too bad actually. 